Hello, everyone. Welcome to Technologies Discussion Channel. Today, I'd like to continue the discussion on Arduino and Python programming. The objective of this video is to demonstrate how can we actually push a button and then it will activate the puzzle. In short, the push button is actually configured as an input and the buzzer is actually configured as an output. So when I actually push the push button, it will activate the puzzle. So all this will be fulfilled by using PyCharm and also through the Arduino Uno board. So I'm going to show it to you. For example, for this particular case, if I activate the push button, then the buzzer will sum up to create some alarm, for example. So this will be the objective of this video. This will be the part seven series discussion on Arduino and Python programming. If you're keen to know more about Arduino and also Python programming, please take a look on the playlist under description. If you're keen to know more. This is my email. If you have any question regards on today's discussion, please drop me an email. Before I continue, I'd like to urge you guys to support this channel by pressing the like and also subscribe button. Please also turn on your notification bell in order to receive more information from this channel. Once again, sincere thanks for your strong support. Before I mention about task three, okay, so basically let's understand what is a push button. Okay, this diagram on top here basically show a push button. You can see that it's actually pin A, B, C, D. Okay, which means that they actually have four pins over here. Okay, so how does the push button actually look like in a schematic way? It's basically shown over here. For example, let's say I actually connect a 5 volt at pin A. I connect a ground at pin B. So when the button is not pushed, okay, A will be still remain 5 volt. Okay, B will be still ground. Okay, because this is actually open circuit. However, when I actually push the push button here, okay, you can see that the 5 volt current starts to flow. Okay, because over here it becomes a short circuit. And therefore you can see that the current actually flow from A to B and also maybe to A to C. Okay, so basically this is the configuration that we are going to use on this push button. Typically we will connect 5 volt over here the ground over here and the monitoring can be at pin number C okay because if let's say there's no connection or maybe I should say that the push button is not activate okay you can see that basically C will be still grounded and the moment that the push button is actually activate you can see that 5 volt actually came here and therefore C actually configure from 0 volt to 5 volt when the button is actually pressed Okay, so with this, I think you have a better idea how does a push button actually work. Okay, let's take a look how we actually can connect the Arduino and also the circuit over here. Okay, let's zoom in over the push button as I told you early on here. So this is basically A, this is B, and this is C, which I have explained to you earlier on. Okay, so over here, for example, you can see that 5 volt is actually bring it to A. And basically this is actually grounded to B and this is actually for monitoring. And this part here, I configure them as an input to the Arduino board through pin number nine. Okay, so if let's say there is a five volt and if let's say the push button is not activate, this will be still remain grounded because this part here is connected to part B and C they are actually connected and so therefore it remain ground or zero volt and basically over pin 9 it will be still zero volt if now by button is actually activate okay, you can see that this part number a actually will cause a current to flow through and over here once they flow through you can see that this part will be true and also for part c here basically this part will be true and therefore over here it will actually indicate a 5 volt okay so if we receive a 5 volt which indicate that the push button has been activated by someone which means that when i actually press the push button okay a 5 volt will be the outcome and the 5 volt will be actually sent to pin number nine okay so next okay how can we actually activate a puzzle okay so this is a puzzle so 
actually you don't really need a resistor here. So for example, if I want to turn on my parser, I actually send a 5 volt over here. And basically once the 5 volt is here, the current will flow and the parser will sum up. And basically this will be the return path. And if I want to switch off the parser, what I need to do is basically I put a 0 volt and basically no current will flow and hence the parser will not have any sound. Okay, over here, basically, I also connect my 5 volt okay, through the Arduino board here and also the ground. So with this, we are ready to do task number 3. Okay, so when push button is pressed, the puzzle will sound. Okay, so let's break them into two tasks, step 1 and step number 2. Step number 1, basically, is the Arduino Uno board will wait patiently okay, to see if the button, whether is it pressed or not, so once it press, it will actually send a high to pin 9, which I have explained on the previous slide. So basically, with this, basically, the Arduino board will wait very patiently to see if anyone trigger the push button. If there's no triggering, basically, at pin 9, it will be still remain at 0 volt. However, once someone actually push on the push button, okay, it actually send a high volt to pin 9. So therefore, I know that this push button has been activated. Steps number two. Okay, once this is activated, okay, I actually want to sound the buzzer through pin number 10, which I have explained very clearly. Okay, so let's take a look on the source code in order to understand better. Let me explain the source code of pushing a button to activate the buzzer. Okay, so the first two lines basically is the loading of the file as the same as the previous video. If you need this file, I will send a modified one to you guys. Next, this particular line, line number four, actually indicate that this Arduino Uno board is at COM7. These two lines is basically what we have discussed earlier on on the traffic light or the three LED. Basically, this time round, I actually have an input. Okay, so but before we go into the input, let's quickly discuss on the output. For this case here, you can see that my puzzle is actually controlled by pin number 10. And actually pin number 10, I actually set as an output. So in short, for example, if I put a 5 volt at pin 10, the puzzle will sound. If I put a 0 volt at pin 10, the puzzle will not have any sound. Basically, by controlling at the output of pin 10, I will actually turn on or turn off the buzzer accordingly. Okay, so basically this is what we have discussed earlier on on the LED. This is probably something new, which is to configure as an input. For this case here, I actually indicate that pin 9 will be as an input. And at pin 9, I actually put a button onto a pin 9. Okay, so what does this button do? For example, this pin 9, once I configure under input, they will monitor, okay, they will be monitor pin 9, whether is it a 5 volt or 0 volt. For example, when I push a button, okay, basically they will indicate that the button is pushed at the pin 9, and I will be able to know that the button has been activated. If I don't actually press anything on the button, again, the pin 9 will not have any response or any indicative, then therefore, okay, basically the monitoring will mention that nothing has been pressed on pin number 9. So therefore over here, this digital input basically configured as a monitor. So basically what monitor means that basically this Arduino Uno board will monitor at pin 9 to see if anyone actually press on the button or not. Okay, so basically this line here is all the monitor. So basically they start the monitor file here. Next on this two line, basically I actually start the control block which means that I actually power on my Arduino Uno board. I also activate my monitor. Okay, so over here, you probably can see that I actually start on the monitor. For example, the monitor space can be like 0 0.1 second. I do all the monitor. So next, I actually have this pin. Okay, you can push button to sound puzzle. So basically, this will be display and to tell the user that any point of time when he's ready, he can actually press the button to sound the puzzle. So after that, they actually wait to see that if the button is pressed or not. So if the button is not pressed, okay, basically this line will not be true. And what happened here is basically 
at this particular line, they only just waiting to see that if the button is pressed or not. If it's not pressed, it will be remain idle. If it's pressed, immediately this line will be executed. And the puzzle will turn on. The puzzle will turn on for five seconds. After that, the puzzle will turn off. After that, they actually exit from this loop and the controller actually shut down. Okay, so this is a very short explanation of this source code. How can we actually activate the button to, on the other hand, activate the puzzle? Okay, so let's try on this. Okay, so please be very careful. Make sure that you actually select on current file. And then after that, you can press this run button. Okay, so let me activate this run button. Okay, so once they activate the run button here, give it a few seconds. So basically, he mentioned that do you want to run the bot component? Okay, so for example, for this case here, I want to do some testing before I finally confirm whether this push button is working or not. So for this lab session here, it's basically if I activate my push button, the puzzle will sound out. So I need to do the testing. Okay, for this case here, let's indicate that I want to do the testing. And I actually can say that I actually want to test my input device. So my input device here, so I can actually press three to mention that I want to test my input device. Okay, after that, when I'm ready, okay, I can actually press the enter okay, to start the testing. Okay, so let me press the enter to start the testing. Once started, you can start pressing the button many, many times as much as possible to test whether the push button is working or not. So over here, I can actually see that my push button is working properly. How can I tell? Okay, so over this line here, you can see that the button record count is nine, which means that I have pressed the button nine times. Okay, so which means that the push button is working well because it can recognize that I actually press the button for nine times. Okay, so if, for example, if your count is zero, okay, which means that your push button is not working well, you probably need to do a check maybe on the push button, on your connection of the push button, or maybe your source code of the push button. So you need to take a close look on these three things to, in order to troubleshoot if, let's say, your push button is not working well. But for this particular case, or my case, basically show that the push button is working well. As you can see that my push button actually count nine times, which means that I have pressed the push button for nine times. Okay, so let me press enter to continue. Okay, so once I do press this enter to continue, okay, I'm ready to test my output, okay, which is the puzzle. So over here, I can press my tool to test my puzzle here. Okay, so once I press this enter, okay, you probably will hear the puzzle sound. Okay, so let me press enter to hear the puzzle sound. Can you see that? So basically, this is how I actually test my puzzle. So basically, when I press this, I actually test the output device, which is my puzzle. So I have complete the testing of the input, which is my push button and also my output, which is my puzzle. So once I'm done, okay, I can actually press this quick. Okay, I press this quick. Okay, so basically now the instruction is basically wait upon for me to press the input, which is the push button to activate my output, which is the puzzle. Okay, so let's take a look on the other side, the Arduino Uno board to see how they actually respond to the source code that I've written over here. Let's move over. Okay, so over here, you can see that the moment that I press the push button, my puzzle will sound out. So now I'm going to push my push button and you can hear my puzzle sound for five seconds. After that, you will exit the loop. So basically for this program here, I successfully written a program to indicate that push button as an input. So when I actually press the push button, they actually also kill an output. Okay, which is the puzzle. The puzzle will sound when I actually press the input. Okay, so with this, i like to end my discussion. Please help to like and subscribe. Once again, sincere thanks for your strong support.